Hey everyone, Aiden here, and today I want to talk about the patch notes that they just released for the Homestead DLC. Now, Homestead comes out February for the Elder Scrolls Online. It's an update where pretty much uh, you, you, the players in the game can buy homes, more social interaction, stuff like that. But along with the DLC that they're releasing there also, they had a huge balancing thing. So that's what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about the major things in this update that you will want to know so you don't have to scroll through an hour long video of someone reviewing every single patch note this is just the guide for what you need to know what's important and what are the big things that change so without further ado let's get right into it alright so what I'm gonna be going over pretty much is the the combat and the classes um but one the first thing we'll start out with is major evasion uh, the buffs and debuff section so what they did, if you guys do not know, Major Evasion is the buff that Shuffle, it's the dodge chance. What they did is they reduced the dodge chance to 15% from 20%. Normally it's only a 5%, uh, you know, nerf. Now one thing that they did, they created a new debuff category called Minor Magic of Steel. It's a debuff that, um, it applies to the enemies and it restores a flat value of Magicka to the attack. So first, uh, class is Dragon Knight. Now with Dragon Knight, the overall class, they didn't do that much to change it. People were really, uh, excited. They thought Magicka DK was going to be really good again. They thought it was going to be almost the best one, uh, the best class to use. And that is, uh, just not the fact. So I'll go over the really important stuff. Fiery Grip, which is a morph, they... Granted the major expedition buff to 8 seconds from 2 seconds, which is uh, decent. Lava Whip, they increased the damage from this ability and it's more five 5%, so another decent. They nerfed Standard of Might, which a lot of people think was not going to happen, because it is really good in PvE, but it's not very good in PvP, so they nerfed it for the PvE aspect, so in turn it nerfed it for the PvP, so pretty much it just got worse. So Standard of Might, you still do not want to use it. Now, this is a very interesting thing that they changed. The, co the coagulating blood, uh, the dragon blood morph, they made it to where this morph now heals you for 33% of your missing magicka instead of 33% of your missing health. Which, personally, I think this change is kind of weird. I mean, because potentially you could get a much fatter heal, but you don't really want to have your magicka missing. So, so, like, say you had all your magicka gone, you had 36k uh, magicka, it would heal you for 12k heal, which is a really big heal, but then you'd have no magicka, so in turn, it's, it's, it's a very weird thing. Um, Ferocious Leap, they made it to where it now deals flame damage instead of physical damage, so they made a magicka more for Dragon Leap, which is good. Um, personally, I do not play a DK, so these are, I'm just going at these from a very unbiased perspective. I think all the changes they made were good, but I don't think they made it good enough, so I think magicka... DK could use some more love. Um, what else is in here? Nothing that big. Now, Nightblade. This is where I was very surprised because, honestly, with Nightblade, they did nothing to, like, change, really. What they did is Grim Focus, which is this ability right here. I'll pull it up in the tooltip. This uh, ability, what they did is for the Magicka morph of it, they made it to where it scales off of uh, spell damage and max Magicka, which was good. Um, and then the other one, Relentless Focus, which is Stamina, they made it where it scales off your weapon damage and maximum stamina, stamina which is good. Um, and the initial cost, this is what is a big change that uh, is actually going to be important. Instead of costing Magicka, it cost uh, Stamina. And so I think that's actually going to be a good change because they did, they kind of, like, they didn't really buff cloak, buff cloak, but they kind of did it unintentionally, and I'll tell you guys why in a sec. So I think that's actually going to be a better change. It's going to cost less because of your CP and your armor you're wearing, so I actually think it's going to be a good change. Uh, that's the only thing they changed from the assassination skill line, and the next thing is, uh, they for a lot of these uh, skill lines, they adjusted the order you unlock them in, so that's kind of a big deal, kind of not, doesn't really matter. But here's what I really wanted to talk about is the... Shadow Cloak. Now, I use Cloak on my build just because I think it's really good for Nightblades, but it's getting even better. They fixed an issue where the invisibility from this ability and its morphs were being broken by certain abilities, such as Teleport Strike, Dark Flare, and Weapon Enchantments. What would happen is you go into Cloak and people could still uh, Teleport Strike into you, taking you out of Cloak a lot. I've had that happen where a lot of uh, unsuccessful uh, escapes were unsuccessful because of that. So that is a good change. I'm really happy for that. So pretty much, I would have to say they, they didn't really buff Nightblades, but they didn't hurt them at all. So... I personally think that Nightblade is going to be the best class again for the the Homestead patch. I'm gonna personally uh, I already picked on the maid that I'm gonna be doing. I am going to be maining the same as Nightblade, which is my longest character, so that is good. So I'm gonna be sticking with my roots and doing the uh, same as Nightblade. So I'm excited for it. Um, what else did they fix? Now Sorcerer. Uh, they didn't really change too much with Sorcerer. They they buff pets a little bit, which if you are running a pet build, that's good because they did buff them a lot, but not good enough to 
actually have a lasting effect. Now, there was only one thing that they actually was a huge change for Sorcerer, and it was Valicious Curse. The curse that we all know, 3.5 seconds, it's way quicker than the 6 seconds, and it just it counts down quicker. That's the curse everyone uses, and what they did, they renamed this morph to Haunting Curse. This morph no longer shortens the duration of the curse to 3.5 seconds. Um, the curse, wait, hold on one sec. This morph no longer shortens the duration of the curse to 3.5 seconds from 6 seconds. Instead, it causes the curse to echo and trigger one additional time, 6 seconds after the first explosion. So pretty much what it's doing is it's giving you two curses for the price of one. So I guess that's alright. What hasn't been tested yet is if you can curse it, um... Then it'll explode after 6 seconds, then cast another one, and that will explode in 6 seconds, and then the echoing one will explode in 6 seconds. If that is if that is actually doable, which I highly doubt it, then I think it will be a very good change actually, because it's even more burst damage. So, if they do, if I doubt it, that it will be able to stack, but if it does, then that's a good change. If it doesn't, in my opinion, not a good change. So that's pretty much what they fixed with uh, our change with Magic Sork, now with Stamp Sork. What they did is Hurricane, that very overpowered ability, they they dealed it to where um, it's 5% less damage with each tick, and the final damage tick deals went from 225% damage to 150%. So less damage with Hurricane, uh, so Stamp Sork's got slightly nerfed, not too big though. So, but um, now, now we're going on to Templars. Templars, in my opinion, are the class that got changed the most, and... It might, they did literally nothing for Stamina Templars, like, I, I honestly do not think uh, Xenomax cares about the Stamina Templars because they just don't change them. They keep them the same way they've been for a while, and it's just, they just don't change it. So, what they're doing, uh, Blazing Spear, the first uh, ability, it increases the duration of the morph to 8 seconds from 6 seconds, however, it no longer stuns the enemy. So, personally, I don't think that's good, I'd rather have it stun the enemy. Uh, what else did they change? I'm trying to find the very, like, major thing. Um, still searching. Radiant Destruction, the execute that we all know and love, and mostly hate too. They decrease the damage from this ability and its morph by approximately 21%. So what that means is, it will just do 21%, so it'll, uh, less damage, so it'll act more as an execute. Because I've had people hit me for 15k Radiant Destructions while at 50% health. So what it's going to do is, you're still going to do approximately the same amount of damage, but just at lower health. So it's actually the execute ability it needs to be, not just a almost just melting ability once they get them to half health. Because Templars have it really easy right now, where if you spec for damage, you give them down to 50% health and you spam Radiant Destruction and they're dead. Uh, if you do that, it's very like cheesy, but it's very effective. So they nerfed Radiant Destruction, so I think that's actually a good fix. Um, now what they did, Healing Ritual. This involves Breath of Life. So the Templars, that all they do is spam Breath of Life, um, they actually got a big nerf. This ability and its morph no longer heal the casting Templar for an additional 30% health. Now what it was is um, you, you would heal the other person for say 6k health, but you could heal yourself for around 10k health. Now that's no longer going to happen, so Breath of Life got actually a huge nerf. Not going to heal as much, so that's another nerf to Magic of Templar. Now... Even though they they did nerf Radiant and they nerfed Breath of Life, the two most annoying Templar abilities, they did give them this one ability, Radiant Aura, Restoring Aura Morph. So I'm pretty sure, I think, I honestly have no clue what, the, I, that might be Repentance, or it might be the Aura where you like place down, really not sure. But what it does is um they redesigned the ability and the uh, Radiant Aura Morph, so they continue to grant the 10% the ability, like, you know, the 10% recovery that they usually do. But instead, it activating this ability also now applies minor magic of steel to all enemies in a 12 meter radius around you. That is huge. You could be in a massive group facing 20 enemies. You pop one of those, you'll have 400 magic coming from each of those enemies every second. That is, that is 8,000 magicka a second. That is crazy sustain. And if they do keep that, then Templars will literally have no sustain problems anymore because that is actually ridiculous. Um, Templars are actually going to be really good for groups like they always were. But um, solo play, I don't think this will help it too much. But when you are in those huge zergs fighting all those enemies, uh, you will get a lot of magic up back because the meter, the bonuses is 28 meters when maxed out. So that's actually a good range. So you'll be getting a lot of magic up back from Templars. So pretty much, just to recap what happened with Templars, they nerfed Radiant Destruction by 21%. Uh, Breath of Life no longer heals you for the extra 30. And um, they 
the new ability, Radiant Aura, they redesigned it to where you get uh, Magicka back from all the enemies in your area. So all around, that's what they changed for Templar, and just to recap the other things, like Sork, what they was Sork, they changed Curse, so they made it to where it proc like it goes twice in, uh, in pretty much 12 seconds, it goes 1-6 and 1-6, um, so that's what they did, they pretty much made it Curse worse, so Magicka Sorks are going to take a little, little nerf. Um, uh, Stam Sorks, they nerfed Hurricane a little bit, so Stam Sorks are going to be a little bit worse. Nightblades, they barely changed at all. I actually think they helped Nightblades, so I think Nightblades are going to be the meta again. Woohoo. Dragon Knights, they give them small, small buffs that might help Magicka DK a little bit, but I still think it'll be in mostly the same spot. Now for the weapon, uh, skill lines. This will be the last thing I'm doing, because I'm trying to keep this video short, I, even though I know it's not going to be. They changed the, uh, like, order of some abilities. Not too big, but what they did was... It was then the Destro Staff. This is where they changed a lot of stuff. Elemental st um, Storm, you know, the Destro ulti that everyone hates because it is ridiculously overpowered. They reduced its damage by 5%. I think this is alright, not too big of a deal. Um, Force Shock, what they do with this, this ability and its morphs can no longer be reflected. So when Sorks are spamming that, that Force Shock to get your DPS, usually Magic of DK can just reflect it right back at them. But that's no longer the case, so uh, Sorks can just spam Force Shock and Magic of DKs now, so we'll probably have an easier time killing them. Um, what else did they change? That's a big thing. Oh, what they, the, a huge thing they changed is the passive Tri Focus. This passive ability now causes your block to drain Magicka and stops your Magicka uh, recovery instead of stamina, while blocking when you have a Frost Destruction Staff equipped. Now with this, I, I can see a lot of heavy like blocking Magicka builds using a Frost Staff, because they can just block with, they can have a one-handed shield and uh, a Destro Ice Staff. They can just block with the Ice Staff, still they're out, switch to stamina, and while their magic is regening, they use their stamina, then they switch back to Magicka, and just vice versa, and it keeps on regening if you have good enough recovery. So I could see that actually being a problem if it gets out of hand. Another, another thing they changed was the Ancient Knowledge passive, where um, what it does, it, it works now if you have one Destro Staff ability slotted, so you have to have one slotted. What they do with Flame Staffs, uh, they increase your f single target damage by 8%, which that is a lot. Um, Frost Staffs uh, increase the amount of damage you can block by 20% and reduce the cost of block by 30%. Pretty much they're making it where you can have a Magicka kind of block person now, pretty much a Magicka tank. They had that before, but now it's going to be very effective. Lightning Staffs increase your area of effect damage by, or, um, by 8%. Now, I am almost done with this. Sorry for the longer video, but this is the major things. I could go over it and it'd probably take an hour, but this is just the major thing, so anyway, bear with me on this last one. Now, this is the last, um, change that I thought was really cool and could potentially be very overpowered for vampires. Clouding Swarm. This morph no longer causes your character to pulse invisibility every second is active. Instead, activating the swarm now allows you to use the ability again to instantly teleport to an ability up to 22 meters away and deal high damage. This teleport can be used as many times as possible within the swarm's duration. So pretty much, uh, I think Clouding Swarm will definitely be the thing used now because you will always hit them. You can always teleport to them in limited times. You'll have insane mobility. Uh, you won't be healing like you would, but instead you, you could just be teleporting everywhere. I think this is actually going to be a crazy if used. And I'm back, guys. Sorry, my video got cut off. But um, one thing before I do go is the Overland sets like Spinners and Spriggans, that can actually be... Um, bought with AP now, 5,000 AP to be exact, so you can obtain that stuff in PvP, so in turn, the prices will go down, because people, it will be more available, so the gear sets that you really want, they can be, you know, it can be easier obtainable, and that's good, um, no new gear sets this patch, because it just is housing, so I think this patch is actually, gonna be like, a little overview before I go, I think it's gonna be a very interesting pass, um, patch, I don't think they touched Nightblades enough, Nightblades are still... They, like, really didn't touch them at all, actually. I think they're still going to be ridiculous, and I'm definitely going to main my Stamina Nightblade. This patch, that's it for sure. Um, I was thinking about this or Magicka Sword, but I think I have decided that this will definitely be my main. Um, so all in turn, looks like they're trying to... To kind of make, uh... You know, make, make Stamina and Magicka more equal. Personally, I think this patch you will see ridiculous builds, uh, on both ends. But mainly with, I think you, I will see more ridiculous builds with Magicka using those Frost Staffs and the, the Templar regeneration now. I think it's going to be very interesting. Uh, and that's pretty much what I have to say. Sorry for the longer video than I expected, but I thought it would be easier to shorten it down. Um, so anyway, that is what all I'm going to say. 
hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, comment what you think about these patch changes below. And this has been your boy. See you guys later. Peace.